Hello and uh, welcome to day 12 of the uh, Electronic Sound Advent Calendar. Today I think I'm going to do something a bit special. We'll start with the calendar and we'll get to it. So day 12 we have another capacitor. Now we've been adding small components like capacitors and resistors and they are changing the frequency in audible ways but I think they're changing more than just the frequency. Um, Let's just first see where the guide takes us and then we'll work from there. So day 12, which I kind of hidden from yesterday so we could get there, um, we're adding yet another 100 nanofarad capacitor, which increases the frequency even more. Uh, and we still do the two-tone sounds. So I guess we are now what moving it so this is not really splayed at all. Oh, well, should we hear how it sounded yesterday first so we can compare it? So, okay, and I'm just going to insert the new capacitor. I'm not going to move the trim pot at all so we can hear how it will be different. There we go. So there's the third capacitor in place. Cover the speaker, right? So you can hear it's different. I wonder if those batteries are getting slightly iffy, but anyway, right? I think we can do something with this. So I have a cool tool this guy, an oscilloscope. And I think we are going to wire the oscilloscope into perhaps where the speaker output is. Um, and we should start to see what is going on with this circuit. Now I'm going to need probes. So we'll start with a single probe. I don't know if we're going to need a secondary probe. We'll see. No idea yet, but we can start to see what's going on in this circuit. So we'll just wire that in. And we'll take one of them. So there's a ground probe here, which I can put at anything that's in the ground. Which I suspect will be this resistor down here, but that resistor, it's always connected to ground, so that's all good. And the other one will take it on this capacitor output here. Okay, we will power up the oscilloscope. I think I'm going to need to move this so I've got more room because I'm running out of some workspace. I've only got a smallish space to work in here. Okay, so we can see this and make sure you can see the screen of the oscilloscope and the device where we're probing it. Let's give ourselves a bit more space. Okay, turn it on. Give it a little time to uh, boot up. And we're in, and we must be connected. Um, two volts per, well, yeah, so there's two volts per grid dimension. Don't really know what the frequency is. Let's see what happens if we actually activate this, if we see anything. And maybe... Okay, the first thing is, is where's my audio? Did I knock out my... Did I knock something out of place there? I can't hear anything. What have we done? Hmm... found it when I put the probe onto this capacitor I'd slightly pull out the edge which meant it wasn't actually going to the speaker. So oh, let's try again. Let's see. So let's see if we can scale that up a bit. Oh there we are. I want so we can see that and when we change that, I think these batteries are on the way out. Now 
I wonder if the waveform the other side of that capacitor is slightly different. So let's go here. And I am probing now the resistor, the other side of the capacitor. And now we've got more of a square wave instead of a sawtooth wave, which is what's going into the LED. Now we just change the frequency slightly. You can actually see 114 hertz, 126 hertz. Noise is going to do everyone's heads in. Uh, and what have we got going on? over here this part of the circuit still a square wave really we can probably probe it at strange places like the middle of this capacitor here I have no idea what that's going to look like ah this is before the amplifier and given the capacitors are basically just not connected to anything it's going to be a well it was a really really small square wave now, if they're all square waves, the capacitors, I guess, are not necessarily changing the shape and only the frequency. I was expecting a bit more in the way of a interesting wave shapes, but I guess this capacitor here, I like what we see either side of it. In fact, I like it so much. Let's see if we can do this. Let's put in channel two. And channel two, what I've done is I have stuck a little length of wire that I can plug in to ground. And what we can do, so channel two, let's see, channel two scale needs to be, that's the time base, hold on. So, 200 there we go same scale as channel one and if i put that so that's the other side we should be able to see the square wave on channel two. Oh, and we'll position channel two a bit below and channel one a bit above there we go and if i probe here and i've not completely knocked things out oh Let's scale channel two down a little bit. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Channel two, bring it here. Okay, and... So channel two is actually volts, whereas the speaker's getting millivolts. But now we can see the two superimposed and see the square wave that's going to the LED. <coughs> so, and you can see the triangle wave, well, sort of actually, I call that, going to the speaker. That's a sort of wave, not a triangle. I think circuits like this get way more fun if you get to probe with an oscilloscope. Again, it's not one of the required tools, you don't require it to actually do any of the experiments. But I think if we're going to be playing a lot with uh, sound and synthesizers and circuits that oscillate and oscilloscope, I mean, it's in the name, oscillate, oscilloscope, way much more fun that way. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope the fact that I'm talking and competing with the speaker noise hasn't uh, uh, distracted too much from the fun. And uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow for tomorrow's uh, Advent Day, um, day 13. Uh, go make stuff and be awesome. Bye. <laughs> I now know why I had to go and adjust this to a very different level from the other one. You see, this probe has got a little switch, and it's on the 10x setting, or it was, which is why I was ending up looking at, um, well, yeah, 2 volts instead of 200 millivolts, which I was on the other one. So, one of these probes, I think, has the 10x switch, and one of these probes is just a straight one-to-one -one probe. No, it's got a 10x switch on it, too. <laughs> Okay, but of course, if those probes are set differently, then <laughs> I'm presuming that means you get 10x. I'm presuming that means you actually have to scale. Hmm. Oh, bonus material. Let's see what happens if I change the pot while we're on the uh, oscilloscope. You can see.
you can see it actually varying. You can see the frequency changing there. Brilliant. 